Hello and welcome. I'm Maria Ressa. This is your 6 p.m. wrap. At least 41 people are killed and over 100 wounded in a terror attack in Istanbul's main international airport Tuesday, early Wednesday in Manila. Turkish Prime Minister Binali Yildirim says the evidence points to ISIS. Yildirim says the men arrived in a taxi and opened fire at passengers before they detonated the bombs one by one. Five attacks have been blamed on ISIS in the past, including the Ankara bombing in October 2015, where over 100 people died. Vice presidential candidate Bongbong Marcos files an election protest against Vice President-elect Lenny Robredo. This a day before Robredo's oath-taking as Vice President of the Philippines. The election protest is in three parts. In three parts. The first part is uh, pointing out the weaknesses in the system of NPS, or the automatic electoral uh, system. The second part is uh, the Oh, and the documentary evidence that there was vote buying, but feeding, uh, intimidation, failure of election. And finally, the third part is about the change in the hash, in the hash code by uh, during that uh, period from 7:30 to 8:30 on May 9th, when all the changes happened and all of the trends were reversed. Marcus's lawyer, George Garcia, says they're seeking a recount in 27 provinces that covers 36,000 precincts. They also want the results in Basilan, Maguindanao, and Lanao del Sur thrown out. The Marcos camp points to what it calls undervotes that supposedly amounts to 3 million and remain, in their words, unaccounted for. Incoming Communications Secretary Martin Andanar says he expects President-elect Rodrigo Duterte's relationship with the press to normalize. I believe that it's not going to take long before everything normalizes. If you go to Davao, and we've been there already, yes. uh, and, and you look at the local media, they have a very uh, healthy relationship with the mayor. Yes. And uh, on the other hand, if, if, once you look at the national media, which means media in Manila, it's, it's totally the, the opposite. In the provinces, mas mahaba ang pasensya ng tao dun. Duterte accuses the media of slanting his statements, but Andanar says he still understands the need for transparency in government. Some media groups publish an editorial on how the tense relationship between Duterte and the press affects their duties. An Indonesian sultan taps his eldest daughter to become the first female monarch of the Yogyakarta Sultanate. The move triggers a bitter family feud with his cousin, arguing a female heir can't oversee rituals traditionally led by men. Hamenku Buono has been on the throne for 27 years. He has five daughters and no sons. The sultan says he has to adapt as Indonesia modernizes, adding all ruling sultans can introduce changes. European Union leaders meet for the first time without a British representative as they evaluate the damage from the UK's decision to leave the bloc. The 27 remaining EU members agree that the United Kingdom needs time to absorb the shock of its Brexit vote before triggering Article 50 that will begin divorce proceedings. The Leave vote won last week with 52% unleashing turmoil on global financial markets. That's your day's top news. I'm Maria Ressa. Join us again tomorrow for the day's top news. Remember, tomorrow begins today.